Okay, um, I need y'all to get out 117, 118, and 119. Those are all things that we started on last class. 117, we started uh, the synthetic long division, and some of you may have finished that up, but if you didn't finish that up, I need you to do that today. We went over all of 118 together. No more 119. Okay, I'll get it. Uh, well, 119 is the book assignment. Oh, That's why I won't be in there. All right, 118 was a set of notes that we went over, but you probably want to have it out as a reference. And then 119, we started the book assignment last class, uh, but I didn't give you a ton of time to do that, so you shouldn't be finished with that unless you just chose to work ahead. But there was two questions in the book assignment that did not come up in the notes nor the practice worksheet. So I would like to go ahead and start you off with those. Talk about those questions, what they're asking you to do and all that kind of stuff. And then I can take um, any questions if you had anything that you were stuck on at the end of last class that you just ran out of time on. Otherwise, you'll have some time to just finish up the book assignment and make sure you have these three handouts done and turned in. Okay, so question 15. Again, this did not come up in the notes. So a few of you asked me about this last class, but I said, just hold off. We'd have time to talk about it today. So let's go ahead and talk about these. So let me go ahead and, and walk you through 15, uh, how to get the answer and why it is helpful mathematically. And then I'll let you try it real quick on 16 and we'll check it before we go on. Okay, so 15 gives us a polynomial function, 1x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2, and it wants us to apply the, what they're calling the rational zero test, which a lot of times students are not familiar with that name, but you might be familiar with it when I call it the p over q list, because that's kind of how you work it out. Does anyone remember anything about p over q from Algebra 2? I think they probably showed it to you and didn't test you on it. Okay, so it's called P o, or people refer to it as P over Q because the test tells us to take plus or minus all the factors of P and divide it by plus or minus all the factors of Q. That's how our that's where our answer is gonna come from. Now, of course, you should be asking yourself, what is P and Q? So P is the constant, and Q is the leading coefficient. So the number that's being multiplied by X with the biggest exponent. So for question 15, just to get their answer, I just need to do plus or minus the factors of this. So plus or minus everything that divides into two evenly, which is just one and two and divide that by plus or minus all the factors of Q. 
and Q is 1. So the stuff that divides evenly into 1 would be 1. So plus or minus that. And this is all that they're asking for. Now, this is a compact way to say this. And I guess I should have started off by saying this. But I am pretty sure they still show this on the AC, or ask about this on the ACT. And you can see it took me about two seconds of work. What this, this is a compact way to say the same thing. Uh, any of these four things over any of these two things. So like positive one over positive one, negative one over positive one. Some of those are repeats. Two over one, negative two over one. Everything else is a repeat. So this is a compact way to say those four things. Now what this is doing, the reason why in mathematics we like to know and be able to apply this thing called the rational zero test is this tells us the this is important word possible rational zeros so if it has imaginary zeros this test isn't going to help us determine anything with eyes in it but it lists out everything that is possible to be a zero as far as rational numbers are concerned so the fact that 3 is not in this list means that there's no chance 3 is a 0, which means there's no chance that 3 is an x-intercept. 5 is not in this list, so there's 0 chance that this has an x-intercept of 5. Now again, they put the graph there so that you can confirm that. Now really, this is just the third degree, so that doesn't mean that all of these are zeros. These are the zeros that are possible. So notice 1 is actually a 0. We can see that in their graph. And 1 is in the list. Negative 1 is a 0. And it was in the list. And negative 2 is in the list. And negative 2 is a 0. So 2 ended up not being a 0, but that's not the point of the rational 0 test. The rational 0 test is to list out the ones that are possible. Again, if you know what the graph looks like, it doesn't have much meaning behind it. But a lot of times you guys don't know what the graph looks like. So again, if they did graph this for me, just by doing plus or minus the factor of these over plus or minus the factor of these, these are the only possible x-intercepts it has. 1, negative 1, 2, or negative 2. Anything not in that list has zero chance of being an x-intercept. Um, unless it's irrational, like the square root of 2, square root of 3, or imaginary. If it has i's in it, this test doesn't do that. Okay, so you try to apply that for question 16 before I tell you. So 1x cubed minus 4x squared minus 4x plus 16. So just try to make the plus or minus factors of P over plus or minus factors of Q. Yeah. It's not two numbers for P, it's the factors of P. Anything that divides into it evenly. off here because honestly that's about time to work this question five times. So rational zero test says take plus or minus all the factors of P. So plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus eight, plus or minus sixteen. Factors are anything that divides into it evenly. And divide it by plus or minus all the factors of Q where Q is the leading coefficient. The only numbers that divide into 1 evenly is 1, but it says plus or minus. So here is your answer. That's all they're asking you to do. And when this shows up on the ACT, this is how the answers look. This is how people write them. I have no interest in you expanding this out, but I just need you to understand that any of these over any of these is considered a possible rational zero. So I could do 1 over 1 or negative 1 over 1. 
and 2 over 1 or negative 2 over 1, 4 over 1 or negative 4 over 1, or 8 over 1 or negative 8 over 1, or 16 over 1 or negative 16 over 1. This is just a compact way to say all of that. So, once again, <clears throat> as far as our class is concerned, this is all you need it for. Um, for the ACT, that's all you need to know. But really, the reason why it shows up on the ACT and the reason that's in the book here is that this lists out all of the possible rational zeros. So this is only a third degree. It's only got three zeros. So not all of these are zeros, but these are the only ones that make sense to even be possible. Five's not in this list. I know that there's no chance five is an x-intercept. Three is not in this list. There's 0% chance that three is an x-intercept. Two is in this list, so there's a decent chance that two is an x-intercept, but just not a guarantee. And then they put the graph over there so that you can see it looks like two they put the graph over here so that you can see that the ones in this list are actually zeros four is a zero and four was in the list two is a zero and two was in the list negative two is a zero and negative two is in the list so it's a quick five seconds worth of work way to know which zeros are even possible and even if it's a big list it's still better than it's still better than an infinite amount of just having no idea what could be a zero okay now I think that's the only two questions like that so is there anything specific about 15 or 16 that I can go back over to help yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say, but, uh, 37, 33 are so Oh, it does? Okay, thank you. Yeah. And those are both odd, so you can check those in the back of the book, and obviously I'll help you with those if you still like, feel like you still need to use those. But again, not a hard thing, but um, honestly, your Algebra 2 teachers are probably not trying to make you dive into this too much. So what I used to make my Algebra 2 classes do, because I taught Honors Algebra 2 for four or five years, is I would, at the end of a polynomial unit, is I would want my students to figure out what this graph looks like with no calculator. And so this is helpful because it gives you a list of things that might be x-intercepts. And what you can do is you can try to synthetically divide one of them out. And if it divides into it evenly, then you just found a zero and you just found a factor. And if you only need to find three of them, um, you can get all the x-intercepts that way and then one wouldn't be because it wouldn't divide into it evenly but then you might try negative one and it may not divide into it evenly but then you might try two and it does divide into it evenly and then you get this third degree down to a second degree and then you can just use factoring or quadratic formula but without this list you just have no idea what to guess you're just completely guessing what to try which could, you could spend your whole life on one question that way. This at least gave people some reasonable guesses to try. So again, they were um, probably being nice to you to make you not have to go through that much in polynomials, but that's probably also why you don't remember this P over Q list, just because you didn't have context behind it. What do you need? Okay, so does anybody have um, any questions from 119 that you started last class that you know you need help with? Yeah. Uh, 31. 31.
Okay, so um, I do have a video of this on the website. So if you're not to question 31 right now, you can ignore me and you can use the website later if you would prefer that. Okay, 31 asks us to find all the real solutions to this. So um, there's a couple different ways we could do this. And it really just depends on what's given to you. On the quiz, we might give you the graph. And so the zeros would be x-intercepts, but we would have to give you that graph. Or we would have to give you a calculator so that you could graph it and see what the zeros are because real zeros show up as x-intercepts, so imaginary zeros won't. And so just to do that real quickly, and then I'm going to talk about the long way, which we would not do to you on the quiz, but I still think it's worth y'all seeing. Okay, so I'm looking at my graph on the calculator, and some of these look nice, like uh, one, x equals one is obviously an x-intercept. There's one near a half, but it's not one. There is one at negative three. And then there's one at about negative four and a half, but it's not actually a zero. Okay, so do you see how these two are nice whole x-intercepts and do you see how the other two are not nice whole x-intercepts? So what they want you to understand, and this is where it kind of pulls some of these skills together. Sure, my calculator and or the graph only gave me two of the four answers, or up to four, because they may not all be real. But since I can see four x-intercepts, I know that these are real. So the only way to get these without rounding is synthetic division or long division. You could either long divide by x minus 1, or you could synthetically divide by 1. Now, because I know that's a 0, I also know that it should divide into it evenly. And when I do that, this gets it from a fourth degree down to a third degree which you might think so what but I've got another one that should divide into it evenly too so now if I divide out negative 3 into what was left over add down and multiply add down and multiply add down and multiply add down now what did these numbers represent I've got one Okay. 4x And why is this better than this? Then you can um, do like guess and check. Or well, based on what I see on the graph, I know that they're not going to be whole numbers. Oh. oh, you could do quadratic formula? Quadratic formula. Because if you can ever get something down to a quadratic, we always have a way to at least finish the question. So. Negative b plus or minus square root b squared for a c over 2a. 16 plus 8 would be 24. Which is 2 square roots of 6. And then these reduce. Bless you. So negative. 2 plus the square root of 6 and negative 2 minus the square root of 6. Nothing that you were ever going to guess in your head. But again, if you can get a couple of them, either we tell you a couple or we give you a graph where you could see a couple or we give you a calculator where you graph it and get a couple. Dividing one of those out gets it from a fourth degree to a third degree. Dividing the other one out gets it from a third degree down to quadratic. And at least with quadratics, we know we can always finish it with quadratic formula if we have to. So do you have to use negative 3 for the second one? 
like the second synthetic division. Mm, you could do those in either order. You could do negative three first and then one if you wanted to. But you couldn't use the same one. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't do anything. Right. No. Sometimes you could. Um, like. This graph would look like x squared shifted right 3. This is really, it has a 0 of 3 twice, which is why it bounces off the graph instead of goes through the graph. Did y'all talk about multiplicity in Algebra 2? Uh, I think I've heard of it. But I don't know. Okay, so if you have an even multiplicity, it just means you have a 0 that repeats itself an even number of times it will touch the x-axis and bounce off of it. So in this case, you could synthetically divide by 3, it would divide into it evenly, and then you could synthetically divide by 3 a second time and it would still divide into it evenly. Nice. But on this one, it didn't bounce off the x-axis, so I knew neither one of those was going to go in more than once. But if you're not sure, you could always divide by 1, it goes into it evenly, try to divide by 1 again, and it wouldn't go into it evenly. So, I mean, other than an extra 30 seconds of work, it's not that big a deal. But I guess probably the most important part of, of all of this was y'all need to understand how we could phrase this question. We could either give you a calculator so you could graph it and find these first two. We could give you the graph to look at so that you could look at the graph and see these first two. Um, or we could just put in the directions that one is a zero and negative three is a zero. But we basically have to give you enough information to find these so that you can divide them out and get it down to a quadratic. So just several different ways we could go about that. Okay, was there any others that you got stuck on before y'all left on Tuesday or Friday? Friday? Sure. All right, thirty-three A. Part A lists the possible rational zeros, so that's the P over Q list, plus or minus all the factors of the constant over plus or minus all the factors of the leading coefficient. You okay with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. B, sketch the graph of F so that s some of the possible zeros in part A can be disregarded, and then C, determine all real zeros. Okay, so again, we wouldn't make you do this on the quiz. We would either give you this graph or give you the calculator to find one of these. Um, but again, this all kind of ties together. So it just kind of depends on how deep you want to go here. But if one is a possible zero, I could try to synthetically divide by one. And if that gives me a remainder of zero, that's great news because I'm getting it down from a third degree down to second degree. So I can just guess, I have no idea if this will work, but I can guess one. Okay, unfortunately one doesn't divide into it evenly, so I know one's not a zero. Now there is this thing called synthetic substitution, which you guys should might as well learn since we're here. Um, even though this was not zero, Synthetic substitution tells you, wait, there's still a point here. If you synthetically divide by 1 and you get a remainder of negative 6, that's a point on the graph. So since they're going to ask me to graph this in a second, even though that's not 1, it wasn't the best guess, it's still useful information. Okay, so then I guess, I don't know, I'll try to... I'm just showing you worst case if you had no calculator. If you had a calculator, you could look at the x-intercepts to see which one will divide into it evenly. Yeah? Can you factor by grouping? Uh, you could factor by grouping. That would actually be pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, so if you, ca if you caught that this is four terms, if you fact remember factor by grouping and you're careful about the signs and stuff, that would work. So I'm going to try to stick with this method for just a second though just because okay perfect so I accidentally without cheating guessed one that divides into it evenly 
So when x is 2, y is 0. That's what we call a 0 when it's an x-intercept. And just as important, it was originally a third degree. So now that I've divided that out, this represents a second degree. And again, second degrees, I don't want to do quadratic formula. But if I had to, I could. But I factored this one. It looks like the other zeros would be at negative 1 and negative 2. And so now to start sketching a graph of this, I've got all three x-intercepts. And then just based on the shape of the graph, it would have to go up, back down through here, and then it would have to come back up to finish the graph. Um, and I could even be a little more specific, even though this was not what I was hoping for when I guessed this. I do know it goes through 1, negative 6, so I have a little bit more accuracy in this little dip there. So that's a pretty good graph considering I didn't use a calculator at all, and all I had to know was the rational zero test and synthetic division. Rational zero test told me what things were bothered or worth even guessing. I guessed, didn't help. I guessed, it did help. Brought it down to a quadratic. Quadratic solved the other two. And so then there's the graph. Okay, uh, determine all the real zeros. Okay, well, we basically did already. Two that I just guessed from, I just guessed and checked with synthetic division, and then once I got it down to a quadratic, I just factored the last two. So that would be part C. Now again, we won't expect you to do that much by hand on our quiz. We will either give you the graph so that you should see 2, negative 1, and negative 2, um, or we'd give you a calculator so you could graph it, but or in the directions, we would just give you one of those so that you had something to start with to find the other two. So, but this is, even without a calculator, still not that bad. OK, questions about 33 while it's up there? OK, somebody else have anything else that you got stuck on before class ended last time? Uh, number 59. Okay, so they give you 1, 0 is 1 minus the square root of 2i. So imaginary zeros always come in conjugate pairs, so that guarantees 1 plus the square root of 2i is a 0. Okay, you definitely don't want to divide these out because these are so messy that it's going to be a nightmare. But to change these to a factor, just do x minus all of this. And when I say minus all of this, you need to distribute it. Minus the 1 and minus the negative or the minus square root of 2i. Same thing over here, x minus the 0 and distribute changes it to a factor and then you can multiply these two factors together and it's going to look a lot nicer. So take x times all three, it's going to give you three terms. Then negative one times all three gives you three more terms. And then finally Two, square root of 2i times all three terms is going to give you three more terms. Okay, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 would be square root of 4, which just reduces to 2. 
and i times i, what is i squared equal to? Okay, so negative two times negative one actually makes this a plus two. Thank you, we just set it in there, thank you. Okay, so three terms times three terms gives us nine terms. So we saw this last class, it's pretty intimidating, but most of this is gonna go away. Plus two i, minus two i, adds to zero. Plus x i squared of two, minus x i squared of two, adds to zero. We've got an x squared, a minus x that minus x that combines, and a plus one and a plus two that combine. So I think that's what you were asking for. Try to make it look nicer. You gotta change them to factors and multiply those factors together before it looks nicer. And then it's easier to work with. So I think you were gonna finish the question on your own there, but if you long divide that out, it's going to expose the hidden quadratic, and then that's where your other two zeros will come from. Okay, but we can come back and I'll save a little bit of space in case we need to come back and finish that. Okay, does anybody else have one from last class that you got stuck on before you left? Okay, so you can see some of these questions are a little bit longer, but it's not a terribly long assignment. And again, if you didn't finish up the synthetic last class, that's fine too, but that should be part of your to-do list today. And we still have over an hour, about 70 minutes, so should be plenty of time. So I will give you about 15, 20 minutes of work time, and then I will let you tell me which ones you want me to go over with you.
outside. Okay. That's why when we write square roots, we like to put stuff in front, even yeah. though they mean the same mathematically, because it's hard to read it sometimes.
hadn't been quite 20 minutes, but it's been a while. So, is there another question or two I can help with? You do 37. 37? Okay. Part A, list out the possible rational zeros. So that's what we talked about at the start of class. The P over Q list. So you need to do plus or minus all the factors of P, which is the constant. So plus or minus one, two, four, and 8, anything that divides evenly into 8, over plus or minus all the factors of Q. Johnny, what are you working on? Okay. Alright, so there's part A. This is the list of the possible rational zeros. Now again, that's not a tiny list. It's got 16 things there but it's still infinitely better than having no idea what the zeros could be. So again, three is not in this list. I know there's no chance three is an x-intercept. Four is in this list. There's a good chance that four is an x-intercept. So that's where that list is supposed to be helpful. Okay, are you okay with that part? Okay, part B says to use a graphing utility. So graph it. And determine some of the possible zeros from part A. And then determine all of the real zeros. OK, so I'm looking at my graph, and I see four x-intercepts. So this guy has four real zeros. Remember, real zeros always show up as x-intercepts. Imaginary zeros don't. Uh, some of these look like they go through nice whole numbers. I think it's going through 4, so I'm going to hit trace, 4, enter, and it does go through 4, 0, so that's 1. It looks like it goes through 2, so hit trace, 2, enter to jump to that point, and it goes through 2 evenly. also looks like it goes through 1. So if you hit trace 1, enter, it jumps to that point, and it goes through 1, 0. And there's one more that's somewhere between negative, or between 0 and between uh, negative 1. So again, it could be, you might think, well, maybe it's negative 1 third. That's between 0 and negative 1. But that's kind of the point of this list. Negative 1 third is not in this list. There's no way that that's negative one third. If it's not in the list, there's no chance that it's happening. Negative one half is in this list. So trace, negative one half, enter, and then that is the other one. And again, it's a fourth degree, so I know it has four zeros. It turns out all of them are real zeros in this question. And notice all of these numbers were in this list. Four is there, two is there, one is there, negative one half is there. It doesn't mean all of these are zeros, but all of the rational zeros have to be in that list. Okay. You just looked on the graph on the calculator to find those. And yep, that's what it said. Just use graphing utility. Yeah. So again, we could phrase the same type of question in a ton of ways. Either A, we could provide the graph and not give you a calculator. B, we could give you the calculator and you could graph it and have to pull that information from the x-axis. Or C, we could give you two of these in the directions. You could divide out one of them to get to a third degree, divide out a second one to get it to a quadratic, and then you could factor a quadratic formula to find the last two. So it just kind of depends on what information and tools you have. All right, anything else about 37? Okay. Um, 
We got maybe one or two more ready to go for now. Forty-three. Yep. I just need to help start. Okay. So it looks like forty-three gives you a bunch of zeros. Two, two, one plus i. So is that going to be it for the zeros? Yeah. I know. Wait, I'm confused. What's your question? Is there any other zeros besides the three that they gave us? I don't think so. There is. Is it one minus i? Right. Okay. So you have, it's understood that imaginary zeros come in conjugate pairs. So you have to know this one. We don't need to give you both of those if we give you one of them. Okay. And then those are zeros. So to change those into factors, you just need to do x minus, x minus, x minus, distribute the minus, x minus, distribute the minus and now their question wants you to actually multiply all this together so I would multiply these two together and multiply those two together because these are going to be kind of nasty for a step and then you've got to multiply the rest so I'll let you try that but I can go over it to help you finish it if you need to Okay, we still got a little over 45 minutes, so I'm gonna set another timer and try to help out with a few more once that's up. 45 took the rest of my test now. No, now it's not an option. You got other stuff to do. So when does I come in next? Probably later this week. Or I can't actually, I can't do anything later this week. Then Tuesday of next week. Tuesday of next week. Tuesday is Mass Priority Day.
six intercepts that you divide into these numbers and you divide into these numbers. And then you only really have to do that twice because once you get it down to points out, it can be finished for quite a bit. All right, it's already been another 20 minutes, and we're down to about 25 minutes of class, so I guess I can do one more short timer, but anything that you tried that I can help you with. Can you do a number 41? 41? Okay. So 41 wants us to come up with the function that would have zeros of 1 and 5i. Okay, is that going to be it? Um, isn't there one more? There is one more. Negative 5i. Good. This is like 0 plus 5i, so the conjugate would be 0 minus 5i. Okay, you need to be able to change zeros into factors, so just do x minus x minus, x minus, and now you've got the factors. And if you're trying to come up with the function that would have these factors, therefore those zeros, we just need to multiply this mess together. So I would recommend doing the x minus one last and doing these first, just because these are kind of messier. So you need to do x times both of those then negative 5i times both of those. Make sure you remember i squared is negative 1. So these really add to 0. And minus 25i squared is really like negative 25 times negative 1 or plus 25. And again, you don't have to multiply these two together first, but if you don't, you're gonna have i's all over the place until the very, very, very end. That's gonna be a lot harder. Just multiply those two together and then the i stuff gets combined in here. Okay, then multiply these two together. So x times both and negative one times both. And probably should put it in descending order. So I've got this many x cubes, this many x squareds, this many x's, and this as a constant. And again, that's what we do when we make the test. We usually start off with what we want you what well, with what we want your answers to be, and then we change them into factors, multiply them together and make them look like this because just guessing a polynomial and then hoping that the zeros come out to something that are reasonable just isn't going to happen much. So, but make sure you remember i squared is negative one. It's really the same as I don't remember if I made this connection in this class, but we had talked about i is the square root of negative one in the last unit. So if you square this side, you get i squared. If you square this side, you get negative one. So it's really just squaring both sides of the equation. Okay, anybody else? And we do actually have one more class period before the quiz, before the 2.5 quiz, so, yeah. Do you have any more quizzes or tests after the 2.5 quiz? Yes, 2.5 quiz, that might be the last big quiz, but we still have a big test too. The final? Before the final. Semester exam? Same thing before that. There's, there's more tests before that. Yes. Okay. There's like five weeks of school left. Really? I thought there was like three. It's it's like three, three everyone on the whiteboard. It says three weeks of school. But it's like 18 days of school. Yeah, March 18 days. Days. So that's more four. I thought our quiz was on the second of May. Thursday. Four weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Three and a half plus one seven. What? Uh, it should be next Monday or next Tuesday. Is the second Thursday? Yeah. Okay, then that's often.
me double check. Yeah, again, it's not next class. Oh wait. I'm sorry, that's that's wrong. It's not next class, which is the second. It will be the class after that, which would be the seventh. I will update that now. Thank you all for pointing that out. So we will get a little bit more practice, but between the synthetic long division practice, between the reminders on the 2.5 worksheet, and then you practicing the same type of questions on 2.5 in the book work. That's essentially what the quiz will be, but I'll find a little bit more practice for you on Thursday, and then we'll quiz Tuesday. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn the screen off, but again, you guys still have 20 minutes, so if you are not finished with those, and if you've not turned those into Google Classroom, please do that before you quit for today. Again, you don't really need to study in the sense that you have a quiz next class, but it would probably be beneficial to look this stuff over. Um, it would probably help out if you did that. So.